What is going on everybody? This is Yes I Read That and today I am reviewing The Bands of Mourning by Brandon Sanders. This book is book 6 of the Mistborn series and it is the third Wax and Wayne book, so third book about Wax and Wayne. And I have to say I'm super excited about this book. This is Definitely my favorite Wax and Wayne book so far. It's going down in this book. It's crazy. So let's get right into the story. After a small recap, I'll show you my likes and dislikes and tell you my score for the book. Um, but yeah, the story. As I said, it goes down in this book. So from the name, maybe you can tell that it has something to do with the bands of mourning. And the Bands of Mourning are these mythical metal mines that the Lord Ruler used to wear. So the legend is that these metal mines grant anybody who wears them the power that the Lord Ruler had and the power that the Lord Ruler commanded. So basically superhuman and incredibly divine powers. So the story starts off with a Kandra researcher who arrives back or returns back to Elendel and he has a picture of what seems to depict the bands of mourning and some kind of writing in a language that nobody can read. So it's kind of a mystery again. Wax Wayne, Steris and Marasi, the whole gang is back. They start to investigate this issue and for this they travel to an outer city in the outer basin because basically we've only been in Elendil but for this to investigate this issue they actually travel to the outer basin by train and well on the way there they already get robbed on the train by a very organized group of criminals and these train robbers have some unknown machinery that somehow affects the elementic powers, the metal-born powers that Wax has. And when they arrive at the city later on, the city seems to be involved in this whole deal as well. Mr. Suit, who we know from the previous book, seems to be involved as well. And, and from there on, the story just gets freaking crazy. I'm not gonna talk anymore about the story because I can really spoil a lot here, but I just touched like the first few things that happen in the book and everything else is super amazing. I'm just very happy to see some completely unexpected stuff happen again because that has been one of my big complaints in the last books. So yeah, without spoiling anything more, let's just get right into my likes and dislikes. Alright, my likes. As you could maybe tell from me being completely hyped about the book, the ending of the book is a landslide. Everything happens so fast and it's super cool to see what happens. Um, as I said, I'm not gonna spoil it, but I'm gonna talk about a few spoilers after giving my score, so yeah. As the previous books did, this one features amazing characters. I really enjoyed the character growth we see in this book, especially I think Steris is uh, once again depicted a lot more positive than in the previous books. Um, I kind of liked her from the beginning because I'm an organization freak as well and she seems to be one. And yeah, I am, although my booktube videos are super late all the time and I kind of miss them. Hey, the rest of my life I've got that figured out, okay? Okay, on top of these characters there is amazing world building in this book. As I said, I'm not gonna go into it and so I can't really tell you what it's about but just know that a lot of world building is done in this book and we actually finally get to see some new stuff that we didn't know before about the Mistborn world so yeah there's that and um, yeah. I'm just gonna say that there are some epic reveals and that I love the use of technology and you know industrialization which was you know a theme before but in this book it was really used to push the plot forward so yeah I love that and Great action scenes as well, so yeah, really enjoyed the book. One thing that I have to say is uh, that the last 20% of the book probably are really amazing and the rest of it is just good, I guess, just good. But yeah, um, so let's go to my dislikes, which is basically one, I don't know, it felt kind of cheesy at times, <laughs> I really have to say, in the end, and one of the big action scenes was kind of, meh. I, I, I felt kind of annoyed because of these cheesy lines that Wax and Marasi and Co 
sometimes throw out there but well it's whatever and the other thing that I kind of disliked is not really a dislike but you have to keep in mind that the first part of the book feels like the previous books where I always had the opinion that not much happens and nothing new about the world is you know being developed but fortunately that changes later on in the book so my overall score for the book is an 8 out of 10 I would say that the last maybe third of the book can be a 9 out of 10 possibly but the previous part is just like a 6 or a 7 so I'd say an 8 out of 10 is fair and well I would highly recommend this book to you if you read the previous Mistborn books and aren't sure if you should continue or just if you want to read Sanderson's books because now I can confirm that the Mistborn books are actually really good even the second trilogy and it's kind of a shame because now I'm gonna have to wait for the next Mistborn book which isn't gonna arrive for like at least a year I think so yeah bummer Alright, so now if you haven't read the book, make sure to turn off the video because I'm gonna talk about some spoilers now. And I'm gonna start first with the use of technology. So first of all, the first glimpse we got was that there's some kind of device that robs uh, the elementic abilities or powers that Wax had stored up. And it turns out that you know, they, they have this, these small cubes and they can charge them with some kind of elementic power. And if they charge them with the metal that extinguishes other metals, then they can use it like a grenade and extinguish other people's powers. <laughs> so yeah, quite a cool idea. I really enjoyed that. Um, it's so creative. You can charge any metal-born power and that way even Marasi's power become really cool and useful. And I love it. And the second thing is that in the end they had these huge airships and I love how they made a huge show of coming to Elendo with the airship and I love how you can literally see how the technology progresses in these books and how the scientists play some kind of role now and yeah it's really cool to see. I really enjoy this and I hope it's going to become more important going forward. Alright, second spoilery thing and I actually don't want to talk about anything else, um, is that they found a different civilization which is really cool because for now we've only had Elendil and now we got to see kind of the outer basins, we know that there are people living in the roughs, but now we know that there's a completely different civilization and because they are super poor and have a super hard life I guess, um, they have to innovate and they are technologically much further than the people in Orlando, which is super cool. I mean, super interesting to think about having this perfect uh, place where, you know, fruits grow like crazy. And then there's this other place where people rely on technology to even survive, to even stay warm. But somehow that other place gets way further because they're so poor and because they have to work so hard. Yeah. And also the culture with the masks was pretty cool. I mean, super different. I'm not sure where it's going to lead or, you know, <laughs> what that's going to do. But yeah, kind of interesting to see. And I'm really excited for the next book. So yeah. And by the way, um, I just read The State of the Sanderson 2019. No, two, sorry, 2018, where he kind of talks about what he wants to do in 2019. Uh, that's why I mixed it up and he said that there is gonna be well his main focus is gonna be Stormlight book 4 and the rest of the time will be Mistborn probably and a bit of Skyward I think he said and um, the thing is that he said he's already very excited for Mistborn era 3 so after the next book there's gonna be a whole new era and I'm super curious to what that could be. Maybe I'm gonna make a little video with some, I don't know, some theories. I guess we can kind of see where he's going. I'm gonna guess that he's going to be focusing on even more distant future, like, I don't know, 1900s or, you know, last century or something, I don't know. We'll see. And uh, yeah. But well, this concludes my review. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you read the book, make sure to leave a comment below and tell you what you thought. Uh, yeah, if you like the video, drop a like, uh, maybe sub to this channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye!